Um, could you briefly explain like what this research is on? Uh, so the permanent magnet has a fixed orientation of the north and south poles, and the um, the soft magnet, which is like the iron fire, filing cabinet, uh, can easily change its magnetization. And that's what happens when you stick the magnet on. So you stick it on one way, it's attracted because north and south line up like this. You stick it the other way, it's not repelled, it's attracted because the north and south poles on the filing cabinet line up together. So that's, um, that's the process that we're studying. How does the magnetization realign itself when you uh, apply an external magnetic field? So, but that process of changing the north and south poles actually takes some time. Uh, and just like everything physical in life, it's not instantaneous. There's nothing instantaneous, not even propagation of light, right? So, uh, but particularly when you have atoms which have to change their configuration, and that's what happens when you change magnetization. You're changing the direction in which electrons spin. Uh, that takes a moment. So the amount of time that that takes is um, about uh, a fraction of an atom for a short amount of time. And what really happens is that you have your new equilibrium direction. This was where you started at t equal to zero. This is magnetization in the x direction. So at first, it's going to overshoot. And then it's gradually going to converge to the new direction. Okay. All right, so that, that's the high-speed motion of magnetization. But here the magnet isn't moving. It's just that it, it changes internally. It's magnetization state changes. What that means is that you have electrons which spin this way, and then gradually they're going to spin like that. Uh, that's the process that we wanted to study. And the reason that this is important is because in uh, magnetic information storage technology, if you want to change a zero to a one, so this is in your hard drive, for example, then you have to change the magnetization of two different components. So what's called the platter, where the, uh, you know, the, the information is stored, you also have to change it in the heads, which are used to read and write magnetization. So the the goal of the whole study is to reduce the time If you look very broadly, that might be the goal of the area of research. The primary goal is to understand what's happening in that. That's really what we were doing in this experiment. We weren't going, I think, you know, a technological change wasn't going to occur directly as a result of this research. It's more to understand. The next step is to understand how can you measure um, what the direction of the magnetization is. The way you want out of the synchrotron is the light. So whenever you make an electron go around a curve, it emits light, it radiates. So when you accelerate an electron, there's always some radiation that's created. And uh, that's what you're using. You create electromagnetic radiation, this radiation because the electrons are going near relativistic speeds, has the property that it, it's really good light to use to look at things. So it's very bright, and uh, you can make it so that it's, uh, uh, well, if you use the right instrumentation, you can make it so that it has a very specific wavelength. By using specific wavelengths, maybe I have to, specific wavelengths of the light, you can promote an electron from the lowest energy to the outer shell uh, where the electrons bind up the solid. The synchrotron is just a device where we can get the desired wavelength light, where we can use that light to see, to excite the electrons in the solid that we're trying to study, yeah. where we excite the electrons level shells from lowest to highest. Yeah, the synchrotron is just the source of the light. Mm -hmm. and uh, but. You, you couldn't buy such a source. It, it's so bright, you know, maybe 10 to the 6 times brighter than what you could buy for the lab. And it has a specific polarization formed by having 
uh, light, which is polarized this way, and uh, I'm getting this right, and polarized this way, but they don't have their maxima in the electric field in the same place. So what ends up happening is that the electric field vector is always rotating. That excited. How does this having the excited on the electrons from always the highest help us the same direction? There's a quantity uh, optical property which is called dichroism. Dichroism means that there's a preference for the absorption of light depending on the polarization. So if you have right-hand circularly polarized light that you're transmitting through a sample, maybe you get a lot of light through. But then if you have left-hand circularly polarized light into the sample, maybe it absorbs all of it. That's dichroism. There's a difference in the absorption between the right hand and the left hand circularly polarized, or that's circular dichroism. Microscopically in the material is that there has to be some kind of something in the material which is going like this also, which also has some circular uh, polarization. And what that is in the magnetic material is the spin of the electron. Then uh, <coughs> you can probe the mag <coughs> magnetism of these electrons by looking at the dichroism. So this is the key. You can get a measure of how large is the magnetic moment along the direction of the helicity of the light. Okay. By measuring the difference in absorption for this way compared with that way. So we're changing the polarization of the light to see the difference that's coming out from the, the piece that we're studying. Yes. So this, that's, all this is just a device of measuring the direction. It's a way to measure the direction of the magnetization. But what's special about this measurement that you couldn't do in the lab, because the X-ray measurement has an adjustable wavelength, and because the level of the different electronic states changes depending on the atom, then you can see how much magnetic moment you have on one type of atom compared with another type of atom, and filled it all. So we call this uh, the highest occupied level. Okay, so these are filled kind of like this. If you have spin up with respect to magnetization, but these energy states here, you have a s s shift in this band. This is the 3D electronic state. This is also the 3D. But this is 3D spin up, and this is 3D spin up. Why initiate this one? Um, well, that's a good question. So it, more distantly, before we did this actual measurement, I, I think what we had hoped that this measurement would do would, would be to help us understand how energy is lost in the process for the magnetization and the changes. Because you, you know when you pulse the magnetization, it eventually has to wind up in the direction of the applied magnetic field. That means that energy has to be lost somewhere. So we hope that we'd be able to see that that loss process comes from different parts of the magnet moving in different ways. Uh, but that actually isn't what we, what we ultimately found. What we were looking for in that measurement was that there would be um, that there would be a very specific relationship of the different magnetizations uh, as they respectively went through their resonances. But what we saw in all of the measurements, and it took us a long time to to be able to handle this, was that there was always some big difference in the phase between the, the two different measurements that we were taking. And it just didn't fit with the models that we were, uh, we were thinking about. So we kind of had to redefine the goal for the experiment. So it wasn't initially look at this. This is what we got, even though we were trying to look at it. I, I think it lets people know, you know, if they're trying to understand um, uh, how do magnets interact with very high frequency signals, which is always going to be what you have when you try to change magnetization 
very quickly, that you, you can't use the simplest model where you say magnetization or that the field is everywhere the same. The field varies over very, very fine length scales, as you can see. And the only way to understand it in this case was to solve uh, the Maxwell's equations uh, for the propagation of a radio wave together with um, the equations of motion for the magnetization. That was the only way. So it, it meant that it's a much harder problem than people had hoped. What it also means is that uh, there are a number of new effects in spin transport. And in order to extract the information that you wanted, you needed to know basically what these fields look like. And uh, the message from this experiment was that it's, it's more complicated than one thought, and you can't use a, a simple model. But, oh, well, uh, you've already made the right decision, I think. <laughs> Uh, find find what you like and you know focus on that. I, I guess that's uh, because um, you know uh, motivation is really the most important uh, thing for the, your success in whatever you decide to study. Uh, so, um, so, what is your motivation? Um, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> I could, I could answer in two ways. So, um, you know, one, to try to uh, understand things well and uh, see how everything fits together into a, uh, you know, a common understanding for my sub-discipline, which is magnetism. Try to understand magnetism better. Uh, and to, to try to make magnetic technology better. Those are sort of my, my two goals. Um, Honestly, you know, it, it's difficult to think about uh, about that question because I've just been doing this for so long. I haven't thought about why. <laughs> it's uh, you know, it's really what what I do. So teaching people is also uh, important to me. So I, I teach uh, classes here, and I find that rewarding. People do things without having a grand reason, certainly, but uh, having a grand reason probably helps you stay motivated when you think maybe it's not what you want to do. And that happens to every scientist, actually. Have you thought of that? Sure. Uh, and every graduate student here, I think, that <coughs> PhD students always have a, a moment um, when they think, oh, this wasn't really what I wanted to do. Nothing is working. I'm having a bad time. Uh, but then, um, you know, that is usually temporary. You, you shouldn't expect to be able to jump in and understand everything, you know, it, it's not easy.